Today for Mousetrap Monday, I have something a little different to show you. People have asked in the comment section if I could invent my own mousetrap, what it would look like. I came up with several really unique designs and in this video, I'm going to share one of those with you. Now throughout history, people have invented many different styles of mousetraps. There's over 4,000 patents, lots of ways of catching and killing mice. I guess the same is true. If you build a better mousetrap, the world will come knocking at your door. There's new mousetraps coming out all the time. Now in some cases, people invent traps that are designed to catch and kill as many mice as possible. And in other cases, people come up with something a little different that appeals to the humans buying the traps more than focusing on how well they work. And one way they've done that throughout history is turned to nature and got inspiration from the natural predators of rodents. Here's a trap from the 1800s called the Eagle Claw. It simulates the talons of a raptor. It comes down and catches those mice. It does work, it's a unique design, and definitely inspired by an eagle coming down and grabbing that mouse. Now people also know that cats catch mice, and in several cases, people have invented a cat-shaped mousetrap. This one's called the Kitty Gotcha. It doesn't work the best, but it's really valuable because people like the cat face. Here's a more recent one called Black Cat. It has big teeth and a cat face on there. Now I thought one of the coolest predators of mice are snakes. They'll catch and eat mice whole, so why not invent a snake-shaped mouse trap? And I came up with this. Here's a rubber snake I bought on eBay. It has a big mouth here. And what I'm going to do here is I have a vintage all-steel mouse trap that will fit right in its mouth. It has little metal jaws. Mice come in, step on the pad, come slamming down. Now we can completely conceal that inside the snake's mouth. Wrap that around, set it up, and then we'll have mice come up to the snake, stick their head inside the mouth, and get caught. Now I'm kind of concerned that mice might have a natural fear of snakes and this might not work, so we're gonna have to test it out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go set up the snake trap in the barn, put peanut butter there in the mouth, and see if the mice will stick their heads in, trip the trigger pad, and get caught by the snake. Well, this clearly answers the question for me if mice would consider a rubber snake a predator and avoid it. They don't seem to mind at all. They didn't think of it as a threat. They came right into the mouth, climbed in there to get the bait. That trap went off and caught them. And something that's really interesting is it's a new season. Last week, our bot fly maggot hatched into adult. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, there's a rodent bot fly that likes to infect mice and squirrels and rats. And last winter, I was catching a bunch of them. Over half the mice I caught had these bot flies in it. And all summer, I haven't seen a single one. Well, this is the first mouse that has a funny bulge right there. And if you flip it over, you see a little hole where the bot fly is living. So really gross, but the bot flies are back and I'm gonna do a special video on removing this. It's gonna be kind of interesting. We're gonna try it with essential oils because I saw a little trick on removing ticks with essential oils, the peppermint. So we're gonna try it on bot flies, but that's a different video. I would love to see someone invent or market a rubber snake mouse trap. I think it's a gag, it's kind of funny, but you can make it where it'd work and I think it would sell. So that's the challenge. Go make a rubber snake mouse trap that you could sell. Now these flies really want this dead mouse, so I'm gonna release it, just open up that mouth there. We can go catch more with our little snake trap and let's go see what this bot fly does when we give it some essential oils of peppermint.